Where was your model at? It was in the back. I had three, actually. So your career as an international back model is it's now gone. Over. It's gone. pretty much so gone. Sorry to hear right. that. I ended up getting shingles down my back. And literally at the end of where the shingles was, was where my melanoma, melanoma. ended up being. This is a matter that can be handled yes. early on. You know, later on, it becomes much more difficult. Hey there, I'm Kate Royals. I'm the Community Health Editor at Mississippi Today. I'm here with Marshall Ramsey. He is our editor at large. You see him out and about at large. And um, we have recently launched a health team uh, made up of me, two reporters, and our photographer. And we cover health care issues in the state. And you can check out our coverage at MississippiToday.org. But today I'm here to talk to you because May is Melanoma Awareness Month. And recently, Marshall sat down with Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman to discuss his successful melanoma surgery. Marshall is also a 21-year melanoma survivor and has been an advocate for sun safety and even co-created and produced a 5K race to promote melanoma awareness and research. Here are a few facts about skin cancer. One in five Americans will develop skin cancer by the age of 70. As a side note, I am one of them. I was diagnosed with basal cell carcinoma in 2020. And more than two people die of skin cancer in the U.S. every hour. Having five or more sunburns doubles your risk for melanoma. But when detected early, the five-year survival rate for melanoma is 99%. So pretty good pretty good prognosis. Exactly. And that, that that's really the whole gist of the interview with the Lieutenant Governor because he did the right thing. He actually went and got checked. And, and I did too. That's why I'm still sitting here. And I just realized 21 years, my melanoma could have voted. It's, I'm pretty excited about that. It's, it's amazing. I didn't write. But I mean, literally my story is one of, not of great struggle, but of one because I actually went to the doctor and they caught the melanoma early. See, melanoma is real. It's, what it is It's cancer of the melanocyte? It's literally what gives you your pigment in your skin. So it's a lot of times shows up in moles, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to look for things like A, B, C, D, the asymmetry, which, you know, is it irregular shaped? Border, is it ragged? Color, is it black or is it two-toned? Or diameter, is it like bigger than the size of a pencil eraser, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I had one that looked a little bit weird. So I went to a couple doctors and they checked and they said, well, you might want to have it off. And I went to a plastic surgeon and he looked at me and his face went ash and he said, that's coming off. So I'm on the table, he's cutting it off and he's got his little, little you know, magnifying glasses on. He literally looks down at my side and he said, that's coming off. And uh, two days later, I got the phone call. It was April 17, 2001 at 5.30 in the afternoon. And he said, you've got melanoma. And I was treated, and here I am. And the lieutenant governor, when I talked to him, he really wanted to stress the fact that he realized that a lot of people don't understand how important it is to at least have your doctor check or have a loved one check you. And if you see those things that look a little bit different in a mole, if it's itching or it's bleeding, go get it checked. And let me use this analogy, and I think everybody in Mississippi will understand this. If you're driving down the road and a rock hits your windshield, all right, so I got you, right? You're, you're saying, yeah, I just happened to happen that yeah. yesterday. If you get the cr crack on your windshield, if you go get it fixed, your windshield's fine. But if you don't, it's going to spread and you're going to lose your windshield. And that's kind of the way melanoma is. And you thankfully did not have a melanoma. But there's two other kinds. There's basal and there's squamous cells. And those are both serious also. But the melanoma spreads very rapidly. So mm. if you want to make sure you get it caught early. And uh, the lieutenant governor, like I said, in this interview you're about to watch, I think you're really going to uh, enjoy it. It was just kind of the same kind of conversation you and I are having. And he was very open and very honest about it. He's going to be fine. Um, this was obviously a scare, but it was one that was caught early, and he is 100% cured, and that, that's great, great news. Yeah. And, uh, but I appreciate him being very open and being able to spread the word on that in the interview. And I'm also really, really excited about the new Pulse newsletter that's going to be yes. coming out biweekly that you and your team are putting together. And I recommend everybody go to the newsletter site, part of the MississippiToday.org and sign up for it immediately. So, because, you know, you think about Mississippi and as you can tell, I'm just a bastion of health when you look at me. Um, I know you talk about editor at large. I'm actually the editor who <laughs> is large right now. But, um, I, I, you know, obviously health issues are something that vex our state. And uh, I think what your coverage is going to be doing is going to help bring a lot of those issues to the surface and allow us to be able to find some really good solutions. So I really applaud your team. Well, thank you. We hope so. And can't wait to check out this interview. Okay.
the American Cancer Society says one out of three Americans in their lifetime will be faced with cancer. And one of the more, I guess, common forms of cancer is skin cancer. Now, there are different types of forms of skin cancer. There is uh, basal cell, squamous cell, but there's also melanoma. Melanoma is cancer of the melanocytes. It is one of the most dangerous forms of cancer, uh, skin cancer. However, if it's caught early, it's 100% curable. And what we're here today to talk about is that the Honorable Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Mississippi, Delbert Hoseman, um, recently had a procedure to remove a melanoma and is doing fantastic. And I just thank you for- I think a, that one out of three. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, I'm, I'm, here, man. I'm here with you. I know, exactly. Because I'm a 20 year survivor of melanoma and you're now a few weeks into it. We and are. You're doing great. And thank you for having taken this time to talk to me today a little bit about it because one of the things I found out about it, I mean, I had it, it freaked me out because I didn't understand melanoma very much and I didn't tell anybody and then I did and suddenly people started getting checked. And I think when you tell your story, I think a lot of Mississippians, well, you'll probably save some lives today. So thank you for taking well, this time. Well, that's the reason to do it. This is not a political thing. It, uh, uh, it's... <clears throat> It is really part of your ordinary taking care, doing your annual review or whatever. And so we had, we were blessed to inherit some molds from dad. Yeah. And so we periodically, we've been checking those over the years. And then when we went in for this one, uh, I noticed when, when she was checking, Dr. Shelley doesn't mind, when she was checking the back, she stayed up there too long. Yeah. I was like, this is probably not good, you know? And then she got a little, or a little eye thing out, you know, that magnifies. She said, I don't like this one. So I said, well, if you don't like it, I don't like it either. I mean, we're together on this. So they go through a process, as you know, of uh, a light biopsy there and just all that other stuff and send it off. And then in about a week or so, 10 days, they call you back and say, well, there's one way or another. In our case, uh, one tested positive. We had a malignant melanoma. So that starts a whole process like you did. First of all, you got to learn how to spell it and all that other, you know, go through all that process about what do you do about it. And in our case, there, there are several different ways to go about it. You can have this what's called moth procedure, which t takes a lot more off of you when they do it. Or if you've got a simple, like a stage one, which is what we had, uh, they just basically cut a big hole. <laughs> you know, they exercise so many centimeters away from your thing, and they do that outpatient. Where was your mole at? It was in the back. I had three, actually. So your so career as an international back model is no gone. It's, it's gone. pretty much so gone. Sorry to hear right, that. right. I have, I have my stripes, so to speak. Yeah. No, I, it was uh, uh, Dr. Lay did ours. You know, we I looked around and they were, he was recommended and whatnot. It's an outpatient thing, and uh, you go by there and about an hour they've done their work. So, um, but I, I think the most important thing is people light skinned. Of course, we all, I guess, claim to be rednecks, and that, that, that happens. But when you and I were running all those years, a lot of years I ran without a shirt on. It was hot in the summer, or, you know, we'd run or run races or whatever without a shirt on. And that probably caused what we had. And then another part of that, which is still questionable, is well, I had COVID. Yeah. So you never know whether COVID is an accelerant of this stuff or not. They're not that far along in looking at it. So, so many Mississippians have had COVID now, you know, really hundreds of thousands of them. So that's another risk factor I think people need to take into account. I mean, there is an immune function to that, I believe. And like, for instance, with me, my dad had cancer. I ended up getting shingles down my back. Mm -hmm. And literally at the end of where the shingles was, was where my melanoma no, ended no up way. being. And I was 33 when it happened. So literally the damage that I'd gotten when I was a teenager out water skiing and running and, right, and all that, right. it takes that long for the damage to, to turn into a to cancer. To matriculate into Yeah, cancer. I've had, I think I've had 80 moles off. Yeah. 60 of them I were pre-cancers. Oh, yeah. oh, I Oh, them. I looked like the 102nd Dalmatian, <laughs> don't worry. But... But the thing is, and I mean, your you know your story is obviously you didn't have a, to have a ton of treatment. You're you're fine now because you did. Oh, yeah. the, you, but you went in, you got checked. I think that's the most important takeaway from today, and the reason that I wanted to talk to you about it. You you used to have a run, remember? We used to run in it and whatnot. And I just thought about that, and if I can get one more Mississippian to get checked and have a have, particularly if you have some moles like you're inherited from your father or whatever. Or if you're light skinned or light haired or whatever, that's there's a greater probability or possibility of this happening and whatnot. But the second part that you emphasize is that this is a matter that can be handled yeah. early on. You know, later on it becomes much more difficult. And one of our good friends' uh, husbands died, and he was like 30 years old, but he just never got checked. And 
I, I would encourage our Mississippi friends that maybe have those particular characteristics to take just a minute in your annual physical, make sure that that's ongoing, that you've had everything checked that looks a little bit different. And particularly, uh, like most of the time, which it's on your back, like you probably wouldn't normally wouldn't see that. So it has to be like in a regular physical or something. Regular physical or having your spouse check. And, and that's what happened with me. My wife saw something that didn't look right. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about the ABC. She was facing you when she saw that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, well, hey, she married me. Okay, so anyways, she, she, got, anyway. yeah, she bless her. Bless her. She deserves it. her halo shines brightly. You got ABCD. You got the symmetry if a mole isn't round. Um, the border if it's ragged. Uh, color if it's a black color or if it's two toned. And D diameter if it's grown. If the mole is grown, it's, and also too if it itches. And like you said, I had a friend who did the race with me. I mean, he yeah. and I produced it together. His father didn't go get checked and his father, it, it took him, it killed him within six months. Yeah. And um, the way a melanoma will grow is that literally it starts out growing this way and then it kind of grows a taproot. Yeah. And when that taproot punches through the dermis, which is a layer of your skin, right. that's when it becomes malignant. Right. And so that's what happened to us. We had one of them where it had gone into that little uh, taproot and they needed to get it out. So. Uh, they don't mess around. I mean, I literally, I was diagnosed on the day of the Mississippi flag vote, April really? 17th, 2001. Yeah. I literally had been getting threats all day long, and my doctor calls me and he says, You got you one have more. Cancer. And I was like, That's the nicest call I've had all day. So, but I know for you, I mean, when you get that phone call, and I, nobody wants to hear that they've got that. That they've got No, I, that. I think it, 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 like everything else, it, uh, uh, makes you assume your own mortality and whatnot, but yeah. it does give you a chance to start looking a little bit because you, you know, like I ran in your race, yeah. we, we did those kinds of things, but I never really thought about yeah. it that much about how it would affect you. But then of course, when she takes a look and says, this one doesn't look good. Yeah. I actually had asked, had stopped by and said, I have one other one that looks like it's growing. That one was fine. It's the one I didn't know that, that, was, that was caught. But I think really, with the normal process, the normal one year or whenever you're supposed to take your physical or whatever, when you do that process, this needs to be part of it. Yes. And if you see something like you're saying that's unusual or raised or different colors or it's spreading out or whatnot, go get checked. Right. I mean, it's uh, covered by insurance. If you don't have insurance, most most people will take a look anyway. But you you can get that covered. And then when you get when you get a call like that, it is a a, a little bit sobering. But the other thing is you read a little bit and you learn how you can deal with it pretty quickly, which we did. Yeah. And most of the time, when I read this stuff, Marshall, most of the positive results occur within six to eight weeks of, yeah. of discovery. Yeah. So if they're, if you're discovering it early on, your odds are very good and you don't have lymph nodes or anything like all that stuff that I, I, I didn't have any of that, but you, it gets away from you pretty quickly. Yeah. So you, that's why this constant visual by you, spouses, all that other kind of stuff, annual physical is real important, even if you don't think you have very many. And we ended up having three, I think, yeah. cut off, one of which I scored on, the other two didn't make it. That's, but that's, that's good. Like I said, they got it and they got it early. And I think probably the best way to put this in a way for Mississippians to understand, okay, so you're driving down the road, a gravel truck throws a rock, it hits your windshield, you get the crack. So what do you do? You go get it fixed, fixed right? Because right. if you don't, guess what happens? It spreads and you lose your windshield. Yep. So just think of the crack on your windshield whenever you think about a mole. You just, if you see something that doesn't look right, don't wait around, go get it checked. And um, like I said, you know, with mine, uh, mine was fairly shallow, the malignant one. And they said, well, you've got a 95% 10 year survival. And, and I've been out 20 years. So, I mean, I'm, I'm old now. You know? No, you're not old. I, but I, I do think now the survival rates are much higher than it's around 99% yeah. when they're caught in that first four, six, eight weeks yeah. period. So it's much higher than that. Now, uh, you don't have to do as much carving as they used to. Right. You know, they get the depth of the thing and they got so many centimeters and that kind of stuff. So they don't have to do as much as they used to. And then I think your testing is better. Um, they ran a test on us that what was your propensity to have cancer. And uh, that's normally done by a dermatologist or whatever. So they did that when we had ours. And our propensity was whatever the lowest one was. And so it, they have a lot more uh, tools in the toolbox here to deal with these kinds of things. But it all starts with you. That's right. Now, nobody's going to call you, even after y'all hopefully have seen 
seen Marshall and I's conversation, nobody's going to call you and remind you to do that. It's something you need to take care of yourself. And I'm very hopeful that this will bring an awareness to that. And um, in a long time, an uh, easy fix, you know, not, it's not, it's an in and out. The next day I was working. Yeah. You know, it's not, you don't go in the hospital or anything anymore. It's very perfunctory. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I didn't even miss a cartoon when, <laughs> when I had my... Now, There's a couple I wish you'd miss. No, I know you wish I'd missed a lot of them in yeah. the next 25 right. years. But, but you know, what's really, really funny about it is I look back on the cartoons I did immediately after surgery. It's like, well, maybe I need to do more after I've focus, surgery. Focus, man. It makes yeah, you they, focus. They were really fantastic. But like I said, I mean, I'm just, I'm appreciative that you, you're, or you and I are sitting here timing this conversation because I didn't, I mean, my great uncle died of it. He was 88. You know, and I thought it was just something that might happen to somebody who's 88 Older, years old. Yeah, you know, more and, senior. And, and I was 30, what, 2, 33 when, yeah. when I had mine. And what happened for me was um, Walt Handelsman, who's the cartoonist down in New Orleans, yeah. a fantastic cartoonist, he had had a melanoma. And it, it, it had come back on him because they sometimes it will come back. And um, that scared me to go get checked. So yes, thank I, goodness. And I looked, and the guy looked at me, and you could see his eyes glaze over because it looked like the stars on my back. And he said, I don't see anything wrong. And I still had a feeling that I needed to go get yeah. checked. So I had another doctor checked it. And he said, well, I'll, I'll, I don't see anything, but I'll take a punch biopsy on this. Yeah. And he said, no, there's dysplastic, which I thought meant paper dysplastic. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant. So then I went to go see another doctor. who another Three. I went to see a third one. And he said, well, I don't see anything that bothers me, but you might want to have this one taken off. So I went to my, my plastic surgeon, and he looked at it, and he said, that's coming off. And like you, he was worried about this one, but then he saw one over in the corner of his I, eye. That happened to me too. And, and he said, I, I'm going to take, take that, that one too. too. So um, I have built him a house in France. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> we, a couple of things about that is this is accessible. Yes. I mean, you can do this in Mississippi. Uh, well, of course, we had ours done here in Jackson, by Dr. Lay, but you can do you can have it anywhere on the coast of Hasbro. There's plenty That's of places, right. Tupelo, there's plenty of places that do this on this kind of basis. It's not something you have to go out of state or to some big right. cancer clinic or whatever to do that, particularly if it's early on. Uh, you save yourself a lot of time and expense. If you and get, your regular doctor can give you a good they scan. Give you, they'll, yeah. they'll give you an estimate, you know, that they don't like it, and dermatologists can look at you pretty quick. Yeah. So, so it's I'm, a, I'm hopeful. You know, we in Mississippi um, just have this... Um, infallibility thing that you know nothing's ever going to happen to us uh, no. well then on top of that we're guys and we don't go to the, the male doctor. the yeah. alpha whatever yeah. but now the watch this you know we have yeah. that mentality watch this so but i do think in this particular instance particularly because we're out in the sun so much and it's hot here now it's hotter probably than it's ever been and we are more likely to be running around in uh, shorts or something and this occurs, and so we just need to be careful. So you're going to cover up a little bit more when you go run? 100%. I'm yeah. running in long sleeve shirts now. So uh, I actually got a floppy hat that, um, that I, I got off the Internet the other day, which is real strange for me because I don't do good at that stuff. But I, I, I think that's it's probably time to pay particular attention. Then you have uh, what occurs with this afterwards, of course, is you go back and get stitches out, whatever. But then about every six months or so, you go back in for a review and they check it all again. So you're on a pretty quick time frame all the way through and that, that protects you from this ever happening again. It is, and that's the main thing is that, that you keep having eyes on you and on that. And also too, you know, you talk about wearing the hat and the sunscreen and that's just good, Good. I mean, it's stuff that you know you should do. But, you but also too, avoiding the sun from the hours from 10 to about four in the afternoon. Which is the heaviest it's you the heaviest, Which, you know what, makes a lot of sense here because it's usually 100 it's degrees hot. anyway. So I'm in all of work. I don't know about you, but I don't like running when it's two o'clock in the afternoon, so. Well, I ran this morning. I got my little three miles something. Oh, nice. So I had a good run this morning, which is good. And yeah. uh, you still like to get out and keep your exercise up. And that, that's the other thing. This really doesn't slow you down. No. Uh, you know, like I said, we, we had surgery like late in the afternoon one day, and then the next morning we were over here working. So it's, it's not something that you have to lay off or, or whatever. It's just something that you need to tend to, like a lot of things in life. Like I said, just like the windshield. It is. Just like get that crack fixed. Now, by the way, we devoted a lot of money to fixing the roads this year. That's just right. Just putting that in, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, you don't worry about that. We're fixing them, I promise everybody. But um, I, like I said, I, I really appreciate that you, you know, are coming forward on this. And, and um, 
you know, I mean, I may may quote you on some other things too, and talk about that because I, like I said, I when I I didn't write about it, and then when I did write about it, I had people emailing saying, yeah, I had one checked and got caught, yeah. and then we did the race, yeah. and we would catch them that way, yeah. and so forth. And you know, anytime we have something like this happen, it's just being able to pay that blessing forward, and and you're being able to do that. I think that's right. We, for whatever reason, uh, we have a pretty big audience because of all the other stuff we do here, from teacher pay to highways and infrastructure. Yeah. So people pay a little bit closer attention, but it that makes it personal. Yeah. You know, people need to understand we're all in one big community here. And when when you can help one other person, we're we have people helping people in Ukraine, we have people helping each other. Mississippi is like a big family. Yeah. And when you can tell parts of your family is y'all be careful, watch out for this. And there right. are other things that you need to watch out for, but watch out for this one because you can pretty much see it coming on. I, I think that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, and I hope it, and uh, if you and I are successful, maybe one more person gets checked and yeah. we don't have, we don't have a bad event. We got a daddy or a mama for a while. That, you know, I um, was speaking one time and a guy came up and just stood up in the audience and he came and he said, my wife died of cancer and I went to your race and I got screened and they caught a melanoma and now my daughter still has a parent. That's, that's exactly right. And I was like, and, 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 and I said, I didn't do anything. You're the one who pursued it and took care of it. At the end of the day, I mean, we like self you know, reliance, and that, at the end of the day, he went and, and got checked. See, and that's so, a success story. That's yeah. that's attributable to you. So, well, maybe together we can do two. That would be nice. That would be a good thing. But I appreciate you, um, you know, sitting down and talking to me about Happy this. Happy to be and, with you, Marshall, and and looking forward to a really prosperous few years and a healthy few years. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, I'm, I'm sorry about your career as a back model, but you, <laughs> next time you go to the beach and somebody stares at your scar, you can say it was a shark attack and tell them it was right where their kids were. He told me that there. story. That's what he did when he went when you went down there. No, I, I think uh, my days of modeling on the beach are pretty much over. Okay. Well, that's, that would have been a good cartoon. Oh, God. I'm, just, I'm not giving you any more information. <laughs> I, I hate that. I hate that. Well, I, I will say this. Um, you know, to have this happen at the end of a very busy uh, session and, and, and so forth. Because I, I would think that probably in the last few years, this was definitely one of the busiest sessions that we've ever had. It was historic. And this occurred probably in the last two weeks or so of the session, which was also historic. Yeah. So while we were kind of thinking, looking over our shoulder a little bit, we dealt with so much here in Mississippi. And, you know, Marshall, as I look back on this now, a month or so after we left, Everything pretty much worked out as it should have. We got a big tax cut, but we didn't obliterate taxes and, and because I've been really worried about inflation, and which is now occurring. And I, I worry about where we're gonna be in three to five years. It's another reason we talk about this kind of stuff. We did the biggest teacher pay raise we've ever done. We made it where our teachers don't have to get a second job anymore. Uh, just a lot of things, equal pay, uh, just redistricting. We did so many things this year that was going on during really when this other was going on. And so I, I think that gives you a little bit of good feeling about that you can do a lot of things at the same time that this doesn't debilitate you. Yeah. If you catch it soon enough, like we're talking about, right. and you take care of it, like they'll recommend what you do, you take care of it soon enough, then you don't have to slow down the other things in life you may think are important. Yeah, because definitely if you allow it to spread, it'll definitely slow down your it life. It does. Yeah. Some yeah. of those other things, when they went past Roman numeral one, did, didn't start looking too good. Yeah, because generally what happens, and, and I think, you know, it's like I said, it spreads out this way. It goes from a, a, um, a horizontal phase to a vertical phase, and then it can get in your lymph system. And then once that, then your odds are getting a little bit, a little bit scarier and then it can spread to your organs. So what you want to do is obviously catch it when early on, early on, that's, early that's on. It. And that's the prevention part and the self is, and the self watch part yeah. is really, really important. So I'm glad you came by today. Oh, me too. It's, it's good, good to see you. It's good I, to say, I don't think I've seen you since the session. So it's uh, I was say congratulations right for, well, I know you've been here, but you know, the capital, uh, the capital is quieter now, I and, and uh, my poor staff was just about out of energy, but they're back re-energized. We're working on next year. We've already started on a lot of things we want to do for the next year, and um, it's kind of it's it's quiet, but it's a good think time now for us to get before we get to the summer. We'll start having hearings up here, and the capital itself. I still, when I come up drive up here, I still can't believe I got an office in here. I mean, it's got this golden eagle on the top. It's Think about the people that have been here since 1903 and all that's happened here. 
you know, among all those people, all the decisions made and, and the people that were here before you, it just is staggering me. This capital is beautiful. If uh, anybody hasn't come, please come down and watch us or come down and just roam around. Now it's beautiful. You get tours and stuff. But it's a phenomenal place. When it's quiet, it has its own life. I know. It kind of reminds me when you go to Destin in November. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of beautiful and it's cool. It's kind of cool, and you can go in, you can get into restaurants or whatever, or, or maybe Oxford or Starful when the students are away or whatever. It's just there's a certain degree of calm here. But you're right about this building. I mean, I've I think about all the things that I draw, and I think drawing this building is probably one of my favorite things to do. Just oh, okay. the architecture. And then now, uh, I, I like and to work later here. at night. Not a lot of times, and I'll go out here. There's nobody else in this building. I mean, like nobody. Maybe one police officer downstairs or something. And you can hear your own footsteps echoing all the way through this place, and it's kind of eerie. And all bit. the all the governors downstairs are I staring know, at I you. Know, yeah, I it's know. like you, you don't want to go down there because they're all watching you go by. You know, I, so I no, it's it's got its own personality, its own uh, its own life is in here, and and uh, things that have been done before, and the things we did this year will go down in that, I think. Yeah. And so I'm I'm really pleased with the last with this session, and hope we have another real positive one. You know, you're getting to be a pretty good health expert. You know, you've had COVID, COVID? you had it seriously, and then you twice. had a mild case. I had it twice, and yeah. I've had I've had my shots and booster and all that kind of stuff, and those are in again individual decisions. Everybody yeah. has to make their own, but I'm very convinced that uh, particularly after the first one, yeah, and that was not good. Yeah, I remember you telling me that you were watching a golf match and literally it was like a dolly painting that you kept watching the same match I over know, and over and over. They right. had they had two tournaments they played at the same time, so I got where I could call the putts on the green, you know, and everything. But I had I couldn't walk. I mean, I couldn't get up and go. I, and my goal was 100 steps a day. Yeah, and, and, I, this, and like I you had, said, I you're a runner. Make the full yeah. 100. I had to go a little bit slower. But I I think those. Uh, COVID has not gone away. I'd encourage everybody to make sure they talk to whoever their yeah. physician is about whether or their medical provider, about whether or not they should have have that. There's some people that shouldn't or wouldn't. And then whether or not you have the booster or not and how long you have it. And now they're talking about reboostering at some point in time. But uh, all of those are individual decisions. Mississippians just need to take care of themselves. Yeah. And I think what we've been talking about today is probably a good step forward. It's a real good step forward. And jogging is too. I yeah. hope you can get back out. I, miss I do. I miss jogging. It. Yeah, I hope to get back. Yeah, because you're walking now. I am walking. Okay. I walked a thousand. I had back surgeries, and and from the day I had back surgery to one year, I walked yeah. a thousand miles. Really? Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. And I'm still in the same place. Well, you're pretty much at the same pace too. You weren't yeah. that fast. No, I really wasn't. I know. No, no, well, no. But whatever. Yeah. Don't worry. You can't bust my chops any more than my own <laughs> children do. So don't worry about that. Governor, thank you so much. It's really good to see you, Marshall. Good to, see you. good to have you here. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that interview. Please check out our coverage at mississippitoday.org and don't forget to sign up for our new health newsletter, The Pulse. Thanks, y'all. Stay healthy.